he said, listen, you know, this, don't think this is going to be a, you're never going to make a career of this. You know what I mean? He said, yes. you're, you're never going to make any money. You're never going to make a career of this. And, and to me as my, my, my motto or my mindset was like, I'm going to prove that guy wrong. Welcome back to the 1% podcast. This is your host, Simon Cromer. And today I have an amazing individual with me. His name is Captain Dan Cullen with Elevate Yacht. Today, he's going to explain kind of his story, kind of what he does. He does a lot of yacht management. He just got back from a festival in Cannes, France, uh, a big boating festival. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So Dan, if you'd like to introduce yourself, where you're from, um, where you're located at, and kind of a little bit about what you do. Yeah. Hey, man. Uh, thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate, uh, you know, I've been following you for, for a while here on the on the social. So I appreciate you getting, uh, we've been in touch for a while. So it's been nice to finally get to a face-to-face here, but um, I'm Captain Dan Cullen. Um, I own Elevate Yacht Management. Uh, we are based in Chicago and um, kind of do a number of services. Um, we do yacht detailing as, uh, as Simon and I uh, first got together chit-chatting about, but uh, yacht management all around. Um, I'm, a yacht, I'm a yacht captain, so I've been captaining vessels uh, professionally for eight years, uh, boat owner for, you know, growing up on boats my whole life. And uh, uh, I also work in yacht sales as well. So kind of a full service rounded, uh, you know, a little bit of everything for the, uh, for the boat owner. So. Yeah. So you do a little bit of everything. I know you've got into a little bit of detailing. Um, so if you could kind of explain like some, I guess, some of the services that you guys do um, with your yacht management company. Yeah. So, um, you know, typically uh, boat owners in general, there's your, they're busy people, you know, you've got a, you've got your life, everyday life, business work, whatever it might be. So, um, as being a boat owner myself and having been uh, a boat owner and understanding all of the demands of, of vessel ownership, uh, it was kind of an easy uh, thing for me to say, well, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, pain in the butt uh, about boating, some the, the basic cleanings and everything else that uh, not everyone wants to have to deal with. So uh, I take a lot of that off the owner's plate and uh, we take it on ourselves. So uh, standard weekly washes, uh, we do preventative maintenance washes. So aside from just washing the exterior of the boat, um, and making sure the windows are spotless, stainless steel is taken care of, uh, teak, all that. We also do preventative maintenance checks on the engine room. So we're looking at, I'm looking at the oils, uh, fuel filters, uh, the uh, sea strainers, all this other stuff to make sure that we're catching things in advance of, of potentially a problem going wrong and ruining your third day for boating or something like that. We're obviously we're out in Chicago, so we've got a pretty much a shortened season right, as you do out in Ohio. So, you know, six months of a season, you will lose one or two weekends. That's a pretty big percentage of your, uh, of your time. So uh, we try to make sure everyone can stay on the water as long as possible and uh, enjoy their vessel and we handle the rest. Yeah, I think that's uh, really great because, you know, for example, like I do, you know, we do detailing. So we're specialized in one thing. You guys kind of cover multiple things, making it easier for the owner um, and I'm sure a lot of these owners, do you even get in direct contact with them or do you, is there like a separate party that you get in contact with? No, I mean, I'm, 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 I have, everything I've done has been forward facing with the ownership, uh, the owners of the boats. Um, I'm on the docks daily. I mean, I'm not a remote owner uh, or by any means I'm, I'm scrubbing the brushes with my guys and, uh, mm-hmm. and we're doing it uh, daily. So, um, so yeah, so it's, uh, you know, current, I mean, the way that things are in Chicago, it's, it's very much the owner will call me, text me and, um, you know, Hey, can you do mind checking on this? We just got back from a trip, check that or whatever it might be. Um, it's straight between myself and the ownership is, is that how it goes. Okay. Yeah. That that's amazing. Cause I know sometimes us as the detailers, we might deal with perhaps a yacht manager who then deals with the owner. So something like Correct. that, but, uh, yeah. And you guys do, like I said, you guys do a lot of things. We specialize in detailing. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of, I'm sure the expectations are just as high as, as in what you're doing compared to what we do. So um, you just get a little yeah. further, you know, and you do the engine, you know, you do engine checks, you do maintenance checks, whereas that's something we don't really dive into here. So uh, yeah, it's pretty much an Correct. all-around. It, it helps that I have, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it helps having the management experience, I'm sorry, the captaining experience uh, in general Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, uh, understanding more about the vessel than just, uh, you know, there's a lot of cleaners out there. There's a lot of, you know, people in this industry. um, But for me, having as full, well-rounded of a background um, in just boating in general, I can see if someone's dock lines are a little out of whack and and maybe their fenders are not in the right place. We can correct that. uh, Whereas maybe another, uh, you know, other companies might not catch that. We, I just feel like we've got an eye for everything. Uh, or more uh, more options like that. So that's kind of what what adds value from from our side to the customer is is just kind of a the well rounded mindset. Um, yes. And 
so so yeah so you know expectations are high and 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 i mean of course the the vessels that we're dealing with our sweet spot is essentially 40 to 60 plus foot vessels um so yeah i mean they're we're not uh you know the, the ownership is, is is wants wants high quality stuff hence you're like you know your one percenters like that like you said uh not uh, so much in the in the uh, realistic sense but in the mental sense right. of, of uh, you know i want my boat spot on and, and that's exactly what we what we strive to do so awesome. and i and I, i'm sure that you do and it's uh, i yeah. appreciate that that's why kind of what kind of why we <laughs> jive a little bit i get that so yeah and that's why i wanted to bring you on today because you know i i take people who you know have that true passion i feel like you have a lot of passion you know you you can tell in your videos that you have on youtube you just really you understand what's going on you want the best for your clients so you know, that made it a good match today. So, um, you know, now that we talked a little bit about that, I just want to talk about your story into becoming into, you know, yacht management, kind of how that looked. And I know you've done some other things in your life. So if you could talk to that, because I feel like there's people out there that, you know, they might, you know, have a normal job or something, but they really like the boating industry and maybe they want to get into it or something. So I just want to learn about your journey a little bit. That's a, that's a great question and, and, and great topic. I'll try not to get too winded. Uh, it's a, kind of a fun story, but obviously, I mean, I grew up on boats my whole life, we, you know, living in the Chicagoland area, boat down the lakes and the rivers out here. Uh, I, I've been on a boat driving boats since I've been a little kid. So in general, I've always had that passion for water. Um, and uh, I bought a, my first boat when I was about 21 years old. Um, uh, 2008 was, uh, was the time that I bought the, decided when everyone else was uh, crashing down, I thought it was a good idea to buy a boat. So <laughs> um, but anyways, having, uh, having spent a more time on a vessel at that point, uh, I really kind of got into this, like, oh, I, the, the lifestyle is, you know, a little, it was my little floating condo and, and, and for friends and family and stuff like that. So that really got me into boating in general. Um, and, uh, finally when I met my wife and we were deciding to buy a house and everything else, I got out of the, uh, the boat itself, we sold the boat and, um, kind of was looking to how do I still stay on the water? How do I kind of still be in and around the water as much as I can? And uh, was chit-chatting with a family friend of ours that uh, I've known for years and uh, talking about boats. And, and they mentioned, yeah, you know, the captain of our vessel um, is retiring and, and we're looking for a new captain. If you know anyone. And I said, well, you know, what do you got? I, I, I'll, I'll be the captain. And he said, well, we've got two 50 foot boats in, in Chicagoland area. And, and would you be interested? So we sat down, we chatted and, and, and they said, listen, we'll, we'll send you to captain school. We'll get you, your, you know, officially your captain's license and, uh, you know, help us manage our, our vessels. And um, so, I mean, for me, I, I would have done it for free. I was through the roof just because it was to, to be on a vessel, to uh, to be on a vessel that was bigger than, than anything I had been on at the time. And, and, and so I took care of those vessels like it was my uh, like it was my job. And I mean, it was obviously, but it was a side job. It was weekends and evenings. Um, and, and if they had a trip planned two Wednesdays from now, I'd be ready and, and have the boat stocked with food or beer or whatever it might be. And, and then we'd, we'd have the vessel cleaned and go from there. So that was kind of my start into, uh, into captaining professionally, getting my license. And um, I had always been in sales and, and just in other industries uh, before getting into boats. But again, my mind was always, how do I be on the boat and on water more? Um, and so I had captain's license for about, uh, I, again, I've had it now for about eight years now officially. Um, but taking care of that uh, family's vessel, uh, those two vessels for maybe three years, just kind of, again, part-time and uh, wasn't, uh, people would say, man, you should be a captain full-time or, or you should, you should, you know, get into selling boats or other things. And I never saw it as a, I don't know why, but I never saw it as a, a full, how could I make it a, a full-time thing? Um, but uh, fast forward a little bit, another year or two, and I'm in a couple desk jobs that I don't enjoy. I'm sitting there kind of thinking, how do I, how am I spending more time on the boats and and one day I just told my wife and said, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I said, screw it. I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of take the leap. I said, you know, I've been taking care of, I've been taking care of a few vessels. And then at, again, as I'm on the docks and your people see me docking the, the vessels that I've been taking care of, and they see me uh, taking, uh, cleaning and making sure that they're really as, as pristine as they can be, because I take good pride in, in that. Um, then my client list would, would expand a bit. And then I have more people call calling me for weekend driving, uh, driving their vessels and whatever. So I kind of looked at it and said, listen, if I take a dive in now, if I'm on the docks every single day, I can easily expand um, the client base. And then it's how do I add more services? So that's when it became the boat cleaning and then the, the detailing and the teak cleaning. And so that it kind of continued to expand as to, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be taken care of on vessels. Uh, again, even just from the checking on the dock lines after a storm or something like that, how do we kind of take it to the next level. And that was really where I just said, 
if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go all in and do it right and, and do as much as I can, as, as well as I can. I'm not going to uh, over inundate and, and try to add everything under the sun because you can only, you know, do certain amount of things so well. Um, but I trying to find the right sweet spot of the things that we can do right for the customer and, and kind of go from there. So. Yes. Such an amazing journey for you. And just to see where you've came and kind of where you're headed now. Um, and you're right. Uh, you can't get to, you got to focus on one thing at a time. Uh, and that's kind of where I was at. I, I knew I, I wanted to get really good at detailing before I tried anything else. Um, you know, I feel like it's important if, if you're really good at something, um, you know, you can do anything. So such an amazing journey. And, you know, I think it's, and I hope it's motivational for people who, you know, perhaps don't like their daytime job if they want to get into boating. I know some people, you know, I talk to a lot of boat owners and, and they're very passionate about the industry. Um, I just hope, you know, if, if they want to get into the industry, they can take that leap of faith kind of like you did and make something happen. So just, just incredible. Cause yeah, and, and, you know, now you're, I'm sure you love what you do now and you've had amazing experiences. Oh, man. Um, and yeah. So is there anything you would like to add on to that? Yeah. I was just going to say, obviously, you know, taking a blind leap of faith and, and having zero experience in the industry is one thing that might be a little uh, drastic, but uh, again, for me, I had been, let's call it dabbling. In other words, in the industry, I'd been in the boating industry on the docks weekly or weekend and, and, and whatnot for a few years. And then, so I, I already had a little bit of an established pre presence and credibility. Um, but for someone else who's totally green, go volunteer on the, on the docks. I get this question a lot too. You know, people say, hey, I'd love to be a boat captain, you know, when I retire or whatever it is, how do I get into it? I mean, a lot of it is just, there's go to the local marinas, the local boat docks and, and volunteer to help someone. Hey man, I'll, I'll help you wash your boat for free. I just want it, you know, just anything you can do to be on and around boats. And then you learn more about the boats. You learn the lingo, you learn the, you know, you meet more and more people and, and people always need a hand on, on vessels, even if it's just a, Hey, do you mind helping me when I'm docking and stuff like that? So to be able to do that, that's what the person who's totally green says, I want to be into the boating industry. There's plenty of opportunities out there. You just got to put yourself out there and maybe take a look, kind of a little bit of leap of faith at that point and, and kind of put yourself out there to introduce yourself to someone who might make, make might be, you know, maybe you're a little uh, less uh, forward and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a bold as I might be to, to kind of just hop out there and introduce yourself to someone, but um, it's doable. And there's a lot of opportunities in this industry. It's a growing industry. It's going to continue to grow for the next few years. So definitely you know, a lot a, of opportunities out it's there. It's a very growing industry, especially when you look at certain locations. And I mean, right now I feel like a lot, a lot of it's booming, but yeah, it is. It's incredible. And um, I just want to ask you too, like, what do you enjoy out of all the services that comes along with the app management? What do you enjoy doing the most? You know, do you enjoy detail? Enjoy being a captain? You know, I'm sure you really enjoy that part of it. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, that's where I started. I mean, for me, captaining and, and being in control of a hundred thousand pound vessel and a you know multi-million dollar vessel, that's really special. And, and, and just, I mean, yeah, for me, I could, I could do that all day long, but um, as I've been adding more services and learning more things about the industry, uh, I mean, I, I find, of course, just being a boat nerd in general, I find a value and, and excitement in all of it. I mean, the detailing side of things, you know, we take a vessel that is super chalky and, and really, you know, very oxidized. And then we take it and, and, and buff the heck out of it and, and compound wet sand, whatever we're doing. And then it shines immediately afterwards that, that the instant gratification you get yes. from taking a vessel that's, you know, <laughs> in, in, in true disrepair to, to gleaming and looking brand new. That's a, a kind of a show of pride for us. It's like, Absolutely. dang, dude, I did a good job. And that, so I, I appreciate that. I've been doing that kind of work on a, on a teak project. I saw you just did a teak project on that, yep. uh, that Chris craft. Um, you know, those are the types of things that, you know, yeah, they're laborious. They're, you know, it's a grind, you're sweating and you're in the sun or whatever it is. It's, it's not uh, a walk in the park all the time. People imagine like, oh yeah, yeah management, you're always, uh, you know, uh, you know, sipping, sipping cocktails, martinis on the dock or whatever it is. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and uh, there's you know, getting your hands dirty for me and working on engines and doing stuff in the builds too. Uh, but I mean, I could do this stuff all day long because that's just true excitement about just i'm on a boat man i could be it's better than being at a desk job that's what yes I, I every it's funny because i always say like every day i come to work i get the best view out of anybody working you know i'm on the water sure, every sure. single day i have an amazing view you know there's nothing you can you know be down about it's just it's an incredible atmosphere and yeah i love the detailing because I, I think i like the transformations and actually uh, teak has grown a lot on me i i used to say like you know i don't really want to do teak work and I, I would turn down jobs but now you know, people really appreciate me for the teak and I, I do enjoy it. And I actually, I know quite a bit about it just from doing woodworking 
throughout high school and you know I'd make cabinets oh, and nice. stain them and stuff so I already had a natural like gift for doing teak work and um yeah and now like you said we just did the Chris Craft which you know that was an amazing transformation on that boat so just super cool work and and you do you gotta like what you're doing and um yeah so I also wanted to kind of jump into uh I guess next would be um maybe like what's uh yeah, well, I did. I want to talk about your YouTube channel a little bit because you have such an amazing YouTube channel. So for anyone that doesn't know um, Elevate Yacht, you can go follow uh, Captain Dan on his YouTube channel. And you just started this recently, but you're putting out yeah, a lot of videos. I mean, yeah. I, like you said, I mean, we're lucky enough to be on boats essentially daily. And, and, and it's funny because it took me a long time to, uh, to actually start the, the, uh, the channel. Uh, I've had a couple of buddies that just said, dude, you know, you got to put the video, you know, start, start a YouTube channel. I'll buy you the GoPro. And, <laughs> and I kind of always, you know, to me, it just seems routine. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm checking an engine, man. It's not, doesn't seem, no one's going to be interested in this, but uh, apparently, you know, there definitely is interest out there. So I, I, I'm forcing myself to get comfortable with the um, taping myself, videotaping myself and talking about certain things yep. and, and, and whatever it might be. And, um, you know, it takes some time to get comfortable as, as you know, with just putting yourself out there to Instagram or, it really YouTube does. or any of this stuff um, it does. um, and figuring out the editing and stuff, which is over my mind some days, but, um, anyway, so yeah, it, it, it really has started to grow. And I, I mean, we're almost at adding a thousand followers or subscribers a, a week or so at this point, which has been, uh, very surprising. I had no idea that it was going to, it was going to come to this. So, uh, it's been exciting to see how it's going The people, the responses, the feedback, uh, um, are, are really cool. I mean, I, people from different countries that are su super supportive and, and it's just been really fun. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. And I'm, now I'm just trying to continue to build that content and, and keep people happy and entertained. That's for sure. Yeah. And I've noticed you have such a good, you know, video presence and it, it seems like you've been doing this for a long time, even though, like you said, you just jumped into it. Cause for me, it was kind of hard. Um, I'm not one, like I I'll, I'll fail. Like I'm not scared to fail. So I'll jump into stuff and make videos. Um, and I'm becoming more comfortable. It looks like you've been doing it for years, it seems like. And you do, you get a ton of positive feedback. You know, I was looking through your comments and and people really like it. And you're doing a great job. Those, uh, those inter Thank not you. interviews, but those tours of those boats, the Serena 68 and the Pardo 60, amazing videos. You, you know, you laid out everything perfectly and you did an amazing job just describing everything. And it was, um, it Thank was you. really cool. So uh, I guess this will dive into like, how do you enjoy, you just got back from the, cans uh france can, show, can yachting festival in, in france yeah um so uh part of what we didn't really get into earlier is is after i dove into uh full-time yacht management um and and being on the docks every single day essentially um i was uh, a couple of my really good clients uh, long-term clients for many years had introduced me to uh, a marina owner in chicagoland area and uh we hit it off immediately and 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 we kind of uh have a, a, a really good tag team approach at this point where um, for them to be able to have a, someone to rely on in Chicago to help manage vessels for their clients. So if they're going to sell a new vessel, you know, it's good to be able to say, listen, call this guy, call Captain Dan, he's going to take care of you. Your vessel will be top notch all season long. And then in the same sense of that, I'm taking care of their, I'm, I have the ability to, this, you know, it's not you know, mandatory that they do, but you know, call Captain Dan, he'll take care of your vessels. And then what I do on the other side is then I help them sell vessels because being a captain and understanding as much as I do about vessels and different boats and engine systems and all these things, it's kind of an easy and just having experience in sales my whole life and in other industries, um, selling a boat to me is, is, is I understand that a lot. So, um, so that's how it gets me to the Fort Lauderdale boat shows, the can yachting festivals and some of these amazing opportunities that I would have, again, never experienced or thought to experience in my life. So um, that positive relationship and symbiotic because again someone wants to buy a new boat but they're like listen I, I want to buy a new boat I want to enjoy it but I don't know how to maintain it or blah 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 I said listen I got you I can take care of that someone you know wants to uh, you know get into a boat that's bigger than what they've used to have been you know if they've been boating on small ski boats and they you know want to buy something bigger for the family or for the grandkids uh, again I can teach you how to drive it I can teach you how to maintain it there's a lot of things that we can do so um, that's where it's been and, and yeah so uh, just got back from Cannes, France. Unbelievable event. Um, uh, it's, you know, International Yachting Festival out there. And, and really, uh, we got a special invite to uh, uh, essentially like the, 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 the Oscars for, for yachts, for a yachting uh, awards uh, show that no other media was, was invited to. And 
I was somehow lucky enough to get the call and, and had to run out and buy a suit uh, uh, <laughs> on the streets of Cannes uh, before the event uh, that day. So that was fun. And uh, um, so, yeah, I, I, again, like you said, I, I, I'm, we're lucky enough to be on boats every day, but I, I, I'm, I, ever since I dove in, I've never looked back and this has been the best, uh, best thing that we've done that I've done since. So um, pretty cool opportunities wow. and, and just to, just to be on the boats. And so. Yeah, you've had some amazing experiences. Like you said, you just were out in France. You go to the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. It's just incredible the things that you've got to do, um, you know, within the industry. And it's only getting better from here. So so how many, uh, I guess, how many yachts do you actually manage? Or do you have under so, uh, right now? Yeah, about uh, 30 vessels under management really? right now during the season. Um, and, um, and that's with, that's just in our weekly program of the weekly washes. And, and preventative maintenance program. Um, so we've got 30 vessels that we clean weekly, um, you know, again, checking the engines, checking all their systems, oils and all that stuff, reporting back to them too, because it obviously will identify stuff. Uh, we do monthly like, impeller checks, which is part of your engine um, that helps bring water through your systems and all this stuff. But um, anyways, we do monthly checks on certain things that could fail. And so then we have to report back to the client. I've noticed that, you know, this is starting to fail. I suggest that we replace it, blah, 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 blah. And, and then we consult and go back and forth. So 30 vessels is a, is, a, is a good number of vessels. Obviously, you know, I, I can up and down the docks. I'm sure you see it. You know, people, people that don't currently use your services are always asking, Hey, can you, you know, help me out, wash my boats for a day. And, you know, I, I, I've got some people coming out. I, yeah. I'd love to take over, you know, do every, every client that asks or every potential client that asks, but you know, we're, uh, we're, we're really focused on let's, you know, we're not biting off more than we can chew. We're, we're starting with a, uh, a solid base of clients that we know we can handle uh, and we know we can and properly maintain. And then as uh, the client book of business continues to expand, then we will, um, we will continue to, uh, to fold out and, and hire more and, and, and to be able to service right. more people at the same time. So, so is it just you doing this or do you have a team? Um, I guess I don't really, I haven't really known too much about that. Do you have a team that works with you? You have a few people. Hired? I do. And so up until last year, I was, you know, I mean, so last year, I, every up until last year, I was doing it all by myself. And I was so, I mean, again, I'd said, I'm still the guy with the brush. I'm still helping my guys out now. Um, but I've been able to step back a little bit and then be more dock presence. And then that's helping to network on the docks and, 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 and helping to uh, scale the business. But um, up until last year, it was just me. This year, I do have a team of, um, you know, some college kids, as you mentioned. So some of them are, have gone back to school at this point. So uh, I still got three guys that are with us now. Um, we had about five guys uh, throughout the season, just to, uh, some of them part-time again, you know, when we're washing boats, we're not going to wash a boat on a Monday afternoon because what's the, most people don't use their boat until what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So um, we kind of hey, take all 30 boats and condense those, those washes into a two or three day period, three day yep. period. So yep. that's um, what we have to do. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that it, it, hence Monday I'm, I, I'm, I'm home right now. And, and of course, you know, we don't, <laughs> those are good days to do projects or other things like that um, or, or take these kinds of phone calls and stuff like that. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, the weekends get, get a little um, busy and, and whatnot, but that's what it's, that's what we're here for. You know, so it's, we do everything we can to get the boat ready for you to just step on and, and, and go and enjoy instead of having to uh, handle all the hassles as, uh, as you walk on the boat and you've got friends and family all showing up in 10 minutes and you're sweating trying to get it all ready. So that's, we do it all in advance. Right. Right. It's, it's almost in a way, it's almost unfortunate that you have to, you know, kind of cram in a lot of your work, you know, towards the weekends as Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah. Um, it does because it kind of in terms of a boat washing, you know, it kind of limits you to how many you can do because you got to squeeze them all in. But that's where we do detailing, you know, early in the week, Monday through Wednesday detailing, you know, then we try to team uh, trying to line that up with the washing on Thursday and Friday. So it's a pretty good system. I'm um, saying with the team work, you know, a lot of people want their maintenance done earlier in the week. Whereas the washing towards the end of the week. So um, we both yeah. struggle with that. That's just how it is. But uh, yeah. So as you know, as a summer, just like now the summer's coming to an end. So what do you do up here in Chicago? How do you prepare? Um, what are your next steps? And obviously you'll take kind of a little bit of break maybe from captaining or is that, or do you yeah. Have- so, um, so the, the fall becomes very busy uh, for a lot of the vessels that we need to take back down to the storage buildings. Um, you know, we Obviously, we're here in the Great Lakes and, and it's cold and the lake freezes and, and we can't uh, keep the boats in the water all the time. So uh, we're bringing vessels. Um, so as a captain and, and, and helping the facilities, uh, the, the marina that I, that I work with, um, I, I run the you know, delivery program for them. So 
we get the boats, the client boats to Chicago for the spring, even if they're not in our weekly maintenance program, you know, we're helping to, to get their vessels up there for the spring into the Chicago Harbor system. And then the fall, same thing. We, I've got a number of captains that, that help work with me and, and we line them up. We get six or seven boats run at the same time. We all run down river and, and or, or to whatever storage facility we go to. So, um, so the fall, we'll get busy for doing that. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll start, you know, beginning the middle of October to the end of October is when we uh, need to be out. All the boats need to be out of the water by the November 15th for, for us in this area. So um, mm-hmm. that'll get busy and then jumps right into to yacht show season, boat show season. I mean, Fort Lauderdale boat shows at the end yeah. of October, Miami boat shows in, mm-hmm. in, in February and, and Palm Beach and all that. So um, in the meantime, I'll, I'll do, we'll take a little bit of time to kind of finally catch my breath and, uh, and, and spend a little more time with the kids as, as it's been a little busy during the summer, but that's, that's what we, you know, we expect, right. It's, it's grind all summer long and, and then, you know, kind of uh, go back at it otherwise, but uh, you know. Yeah. As, w- as one uh, season so, comes, yeah. As one season comes to a close up here, you know, another one's starting down South in a way. So for sure. Um, and, yep. and doing something like what you're doing, you know, you have to love traveling because you are away a lot. I mean, so how do you, how do you manage your work-life balance? Um, I know you got two little ones and your wife. Yeah. So I just kind of want to hear a little bit about that. Cause you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough for, I'm kind of in the same spot and, you know, I get to come home every night, but not always the case for you. Yeah. And so that was kind of part of, uh, I mean, as, as a, as a yacht captain, uh, you know, it, depending on where you're captaining or what, what kind of boat you're on. I mean, yeah, you, you could literally be, you know, away for weeks or months at a time if you're a vessel a, captaining a, a large yacht that, tours the Bahamas or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'd love to do that. Maybe if I was a, a you know, single and, and not, uh, you know, my life was different from the beginning, but I, what I have tried to do as much as I can is now find a way to, how do I, how am I home every day? And, and how can I be with the family and the kids and still maintain vessels and still do what I love? So that's where we've expanded the, the yacht management side of things is I'm doing a little less captaining nowadays, mm-hmm. uh, this, just most recently this year. Um, because when you're captaining, I'm, I'm stuck on one vessel for five, six hours. I love it and I enjoy it. The clients, you know, we, we, we become like part of their family, which is great. But then I can't be helping three other vessels at the same time. So by now it's taking a step back. Now I can manage 30 plus boats a season without, um, you know, chopping some balls. So um, that's that's that, you know, obviously the, you know, the main focus is getting the boats ready for the weekend and getting the clients prepared for their, for their trips. And if they want captains, I've got a number of guys that I can help set them up with. Um, and then, you know, then the evenings and the weekends, I, I try to spend, you know, make up some time at home, of course. And, uh, winter time, of course, will be nice to get a little more time back home. And then, you know, you're gone for a week at a time for the Fort Lauderdale show or a week at a time for can or whatever it might be. So that's things to be away, but you know, it's part of the business, man. It's, you know, as a business owner, you gotta, you gotta kind of do what you gotta do to, to, to help grow your business. And, and if you want to, you know, it's part of the reason why I left the desk right. job because didn't, didn't want to be in a, in a, you know, helping someone else become successful. I wanted to make myself and my, my family successful. So, yeah, that's a really great point. And it is, you have to sacrifice something, um, you know, and you've probably put in some years of sacrificing. So hopefully now, and, and you've been able to grow, you know, a little bit of a team to help you out and stuff. So I'm sure that helps it's a big. lot. Um, and I know a lot yes. of people, you know, they like to mention how, you know, how difficult it is, but, you know, if you want to have a good solid business give you a little more time it's just something you have to do it's hard as one individual you know for me it's hard to detail boats you know every day by by yourself it just it feels like more work it is more work so um yeah I I know exactly where that goes and you know you're at a stage in your life too where you'd like to be at home um like I said you got two little ones and you know you want to be there with them and and give them as much time as you can so I'm sure I, I would imagine so um yeah very cool and and you know, as the winter is coming up, you'll get a little bit more time and a little, little bit of a change of things. The nice thing, and I don't know if you like this, but it's like every day is different. And I love that about being, you know, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner. Every day is different. You know, I'm, I'm on a boat or something, but every boat, you know, I'm working on different boats. I, I'm seeing different things, going to different places. And it just it never gets old, it feels like. And I'm sure you love it. And totally just amazing. Totally agree. Yeah. I mean, it even just with as a captain in general, every every decking situation is 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 a is a you know you can go to the same slip fifty times and the wind's going to be slightly different and stuff like that. So uh, I guess that's a good analogy for business and life or whatever. It's like you know you could be doing the same thing every day, you can you know, but something's always going to change or something always uh, you know a curveball is going to get thrown at you. And so for um, but again, 
that's what I, I, I kind of live on that. I kind of live on the, the, the grind of the, of the, the business. How do you grow your business? How do you take these challenges and instead of how does it beat you down? How does it, you know, kind of strengthen you and, and make you want to grind a little harder and, and do it a little, a little better next time or whatever it might be. So um, I welcome that challenge and not everyone can do it. Not everyone loves it. Um, but for me, and, and it sounds like for yourself, it's just, uh, that's a, that's the fun of the business, I think. So. Yeah, it's amazing because some people, I mean, they'll start a business or something, they become complacent and they just kind of stay in the same spot. But it's like, I know it's with you, it's like you're continuing to grow and get better. And it's just, it's amazing to see it. And I, again, that's another reason I brought you on to talk because, you know, just, just recently you've, you've taken off and even with your YouTube, like you said, you, it was tough for you to start, but you started it. Uh, doing really well and, and you do an amazing job and just sharing different experiences and people like to see that you know it's not every day that people get to see these you know yachts and and you're going all over the place to see them so it's just really cool and, and you do such a great job um so actually i i was curious do you so do you like the serena 68 or the part of 60 which one do you like a little more I, I really enjoyed the part of 60 i i watched i just watched both those videos today and i love the open uh plan like open floor in the back um it's a, yeah. that's a, that's a very, I love the cleanness of that. It's, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of over detailing on the inside. It's just very clean, very crisp for me, just maybe it's just my captain this and <laughs> me or something, but the Serena vessels to me are, are, are my favorite. There's a 58 and we've got a couple of them in Chicagoland area. And, um, and, and that 68, which is the world debut, um, truly impressive. And they're just, they feel like ships. And I guess that's just, again, for me, the boat nerd in me, um, I like that kind that's of amazing. Um, substance, <laughs> substance. Uh, so that that's where I would go if, if I was, again, if I had the money to spend on, the, on that vessel, but uh, it's a, it's a beast. Of, I should bring you out to, uh, to clean one of those boats one day. Cause man, that uh, with the massive fly bridge and the interior and the exterior, I mean, you've got, and so essentially the whole boats to clean in one. So that's a, uh, uh, you know, but Hey, again, I'd take that challenge any day if that's, uh, if, if that's what it is, you know? So, but uh, yeah, it's, but, yeah, it's so cool. good, good, good question just looking at the finishes on those boats and, and kind of the state rooms and the master and the VIPs, just incredible finishes and lighting. And it just, they're so, so well thought out. Um, the brands that you're working with, they're just really, really good designed boats. And it's crazy. And, and I feel like, you know, I work with a lot of older boats and, and work on restoring those. Um, you know, you work with a lot of newer boats and I feel like it's so important to keep up with them right from the get go. And you're probably making oh, a big effort to do that. Cause you know, once you let a boat like that go, it's just, it's a lot of work. And, and they're very nice boats, very Absolutely. expensive, a lot of money. So I'm, I'm sure, yeah, you know, you know, a lot of it. Yep. Just keeping up on it. Like you said, some people don't think even when I was originally a boat owner myself with the small boat. Um, yeah. You don't realize like even just the, you know, you should be washing it weekly, bi-weekly at the, at the least. The least and, yeah. um, and, and, and for gel coat health and, and for teak and everything else. But anyways, um, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I am lucky. Uh, and that's where, you know, I guess part of the channel is, is that the YouTube channel is, is I didn't realize I find myself like you try not to get uh, jaded with the fact that like I'm on these boat special boats very often. And, and I, you know, don't try not to take it for granted because um, there are so many people that, you know, are, are excited to even be on a, on a rowboat, you know, and, and I shoot, I would be just to be on the water, but um, I am lucky enough to be on some, some really special vessels and, and to be around them. So uh, I'm doing my best to, to a take care of them as, as best as I can for the people who are lucky enough to own them and, or now show uh, the rest of the world, what, uh, what these vessels are all about with the, uh, with the channel. So. Yeah. And that's, that's super cool. Um, and uh, another question I had for you was, uh, you know, if somebody, do you have any tips for somebody just looking to get uh, started into yacht management? Um, you know, someone that just wants to get started and kind of doing what you're doing. Um, maybe, you know, today they've watched the podcast and, and they're really interested in, in just what you've been talking about and, and kind of what you've been doing. So any, any tips on someone getting started? Yeah. And so, you know, it's funny because people ask me, what is, what is yacht management? Like it's a made up term. And, you know, I don't know, maybe I kind of, I, I, took it and, 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 and designed it on my own a little bit. I, you know, made, made the, the business name and the company name and all that stuff. But, but to me, it's, it's all about, you know, what can you do for, for, you know, in general, one of my favorite mottos in general is the more value, the more value that you add, the harder you are to be replaced. So in general, if you are adding, you know, anything that you can do to make it the boat owner's life easier, it's going to make you more valuable to them. So um, that's where we, you know, again, where we started to add other services and do more things. But for someone wanting to get into it um, or, or just to getting, you know, 
again, being in, around, in and around these boats in general, the more you're around them, the more you realize, oh, I didn't realize that, you know, the teak needs to be cleaned every week or, or that this needs to be fixed or repaired and as often as it does. So just literally just putting yourself out there and again, just go volunteer, go get a job at a, at a, at a marina as a, as a fuel dock assistant. And you'll, you'll start meeting more people and networking and understanding uh, the needs of the intricacies. And I tell, you know, the, the guys that, that work with me, I said, listen, you know, I understand that, you know, this might be a first job for you or, or, or a job for the summertime, um, you know, but if you like the industry, if you start to find that this is super exciting to you, there's so many avenues, you can invent a product, you know, you can invent something that say, oh man, I didn't realize that this could make a boater's life easier. And, and maybe that's your thing, you know, but in the meantime, if you want to, you know, you know, spend some time and, and work on boats with us for the winter time or for the summertime, like that, it's, it's a great way to, to get in, get your foot in the door. And then from there, it, the world's your oyster. You can figure out where you want to go. So it really is a question. I get the opportunities are endless. I mean, I didn't even realize it until I got into the industry. So I actually came in super green to the industry. I pretty much never seen a boat really in my life till I was like 18. <laughs> Uh, it's funny because I, I grew up on a farm, so it's just a lot different, you know, oh, wow. and, uh, than what people normally who are in the boating market do. So I was very green. I didn't understand a lot, um, but I still, I, I worked for, and in just a couple months, uh, I washed some boats uh, for just an individual. He hired a couple guys and I washed some boats as a summer job while I was in high school. And uh, he let me, he never let us compound or anything, just kind of let us wax sometimes you know and I, i'd be the one you know doing all the cleaning work like inside the cab and stuff and i'm like what am i getting myself into i, I feel like i'm cleaning a house like i'm, I'm inside the cabin yeah. cleaning and i'm like i don't know if this is for me and and then uh after that you know i kind of jumped out for for a while and then i was like hey I, I i was sitting in my college dorm and i'm like i don't know about this whole job thing i'm like i don't know if i'm like i want to have my time and, and do what i want and I was like, you know what? I think the boating industry has got pretty good. I think it has some potential. And I just kind of got back into it and I just started washing again, like I was used to. And it's so like, you just learn so much. So whether you've, you've grown up in the industry, whether you're new, you know, just take the chances, go do it. And a lot of people don't necessarily come from where, where I came from. Like you said, you, a lot of people I talked to, they, they maybe grew up in, in boating or, or had some relationship to it, but I mean, really anybody can do it. And I didn't know I was, I didn't know I was going to enjoy the industry so much. And I just absolutely love every aspect of it. And I just love boating. And so to this day, my family, you know, they, they've never been on a boat. They, they have no idea what oh, I do every day. Just zero idea. Yeah. So, it's, it's just it's well, good crazy. for you what you've been doing, man. Cause it's you crazy. really, uh, in, in your videos, I've been speaking of your YouTube and Instagram, like, you know, you have some very good educational videos about, you know, I honestly cleaning eyes and glasses, one of my favorites from the one that you've done. Cause, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you really did take one that could not see through at all and essentially made it really, really good. So yeah. uh, again, for someone else who's interested or wanting to get more information about whatever it is, I mean, it, YouTube is, is, is where it's at on, you know, guys, uh, there's, you know, Drake and some of the other boat YouTubers and, and, and whatever industry yes. you're in, but um, there has been a, a, an influx of, of really good quality, you know, whether it's captains or, or, or detailers and, and, and cleaning, um, to learn a lot about um, our industry and, and, and things like that. So uh, for anyone, again, that wants to learn a little more, dip into the, uh, to the, you know, the video uh, wormhole that you could get yourself lost in, but you can really find some, uh, some good quality stuff there and, and, and tips. And, and, and again, you're doing the same stuff. You just you keep doing it and keep putting out good, uh, good tutorials and good, you know, things and people will find you. And that's just, that's what makes you, uh, what makes you valuable. So. Thank you. And yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, you, we have people like, you know, me, you, you know, Drake, some other people out there who really just really care about, you know, maintaining these boats and doing the right work. And it's not always that you were able to find videos like that. So I think moving forward, a lot of people, you know, are going to be able to see a lot of different things about the boating industry before in the past. I feel like a lot of it was kind of kept a secret. And even around here, a lot of people try to keep all that stuff a secret. And it's like, I just openly share what I do and, you know, if anything, it actually helps me get more business because people trust me yeah. now. Um, I get a lot of you're people. not giving trade secrets to your to your competitors. They're you know they're probably not even researching as much as we are anyway. Yeah. So I think that's a good call. Yeah, and the customers really appreciate it. And like whether because like sometimes they don't want to do the work anyways, but they they know that I know how to do it because I just shared a video on it. So <laughs> yeah, um, it is. It's like true. I mean, there's just people out there that aren't gonna like detailing a boat, uh, and it's it takes a special person and. I love it, but it, it, not is for everyone, yeah. <laughs> it is, and it's not for everyone. So, 
Yeah, just incredible. But um, yeah, I think uh, I don't know know how long, how far into the interview we are, but I feel like we're we're kind of getting to the end. So um, I I think oh, we uh, had a great talk up to now. Um, I guess I want to ask you a little bit about you know maybe your business or kind of personal life, like like kind of how you you know when th- if I don't know if things get tough for you or how how you manage like every single day and uh, if you have like a routine. I know sometimes people have routines in the morning to get them going, get them ready to go. If you just kind of get up and just get right into it or if the if the boating just makes you so passionate in itself that that's all you need well yeah I mean you know obviously yes I mean there's the I'm excited to be able to go work on boats yeah it's, there's it, there's still some um some mundane parts of it like oh crap I gotta you know we gotta we got a lot of work to do today we've got you know 15 boats to clean today so then you kind of look like but again instead of taking that and saying you know I, I try to take any kind of challenge or or hurdle or or, or thing that is going to be a, you know, oh, I have to do this. Oh, I instead make it, oh, I get to do this. Like, oh man, I get to be on 15 different boats today and it's going to be a long day, but I get to be in, you know, outside and, and doing this. And so a lot of it in mentally for a, a business owner or for anyone in general is it's all about the wording that you attach to, to your, uh, to the things again, instead of I get, or I have to, I get mm. to, instead of, you know, yes. um, I love that. you know, instead of a challenge, instead of like a, a, a problem or, or a, you know, something that's, uh, you know, has gone wrong. It's like, okay, instead of making it like the end of the world, it's, it's how do I improve? How does this, what did this just teach me about the next time this something comes around the, the next hurdle that comes around. So um, being a business owner and, and, and you know, uh, just trying to, to, to grind your way through, you know, to success or to, you know, to whatever you call success is there's, you know, you're going to have stuff along the way and it's, it's not every day is easy and, you know, whatever it is, but it's more about, is how do you continue to keep your, you know, your mindset and your uh, energy up? And it, and again, it's, it's, you got to love what you do because yeah, energy is big. And Steve, um, you know, yep. if you're sitting somewhere you don't enjoy, then yeah, that's going to, that's going to weigh you down a lot faster than if you're loving every moment of what you're doing, even if it is, you know, hot and hundred degrees and, and, and you're buffing uh, with a rotary or whatever. <laughs> so um, yeah. So, so totally it, it, it's a lot of mindset. Um, and um uh, and, and again, you gotta, I gotta, you gotta love the challenge of, of trying to, uh, whether it's improve yourself, improve your business, improve, improve your relationships with, with the clients or the, you know, your knowledge. I mean, I think having a thirst for knowledge is a huge thing too, to, to learn the different techniques and what different product can I use that's going to make the, my job easier and my client's boat cleaner and, and, and whatever else, you know, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. And if you have that continual thirst for expanding your mind and your business and your knowledge and, and sky's sky's the limit yeah i think that's amazing advice um and you were saying uh people say like oh i have to do this and then sometimes i say that and i think i'm like wait like i get to do this i don't have to it's my choice and i mean that that's just yeah. you know a, a good mindset to have and also like the questions you're asking yourself you, you're talking about questions like you know, instead of asking negative questions, you know, ask, ask positive questions, uh, you know, instead of like, if you failed on something, ask like, how can I, or what did that teach me instead of like, mm-hmm. why did I fail? So I think that's a really good perspective. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I think that's great. And, and you've done an amazing job and you, you do, you transfer energy from a video to other people. And I think that's why you're so good at YouTube just being to, cause some people just have that presence where they can just transfer energy from a video to another person. You do an amazing job of that. Um, and some people don't know this, but like, I'm, I'm a little bit more of an introvert. So, you know, I can go out and I can work any day of the week. I can go work on a boat and I'll be great. Um, but some days, you know, there's some days where I don't want to pick up the phone, make the phone calls. And it is, it's a little tough for me. And some people might not realize people, some people might not think that because, you know, I'm making these YouTube videos and stuff, but, um, yeah. you know, it is, it's, it's a challenge for me and everybody has something that they need to work on. Um, everybody does. Like I said, I can go mm-hmm. run that, I can go run a buffer every single day do great work. And, and I do, I have that really good, like mental toughness. Like I, I can get through a day. I can, I can do whatever in terms of that, but in terms of, you know, talking and working with clients sometimes, you know, I'll have an off day or so where I don't feel like it. So um, yeah, I think you made, you made amazing uh, uh, tips there and advice. Uh, and yeah, I, I think we had a really good podcast. I think we are going to wrap it up. Is there anything you'd like to ask me um, personally? No, you know, it was the one thing, you know, everyone has, it's like a stock question. And I think the one question that I was going to ask that it's a, just kind of off the wall a little bit is 
what is the worst piece of advice that you've gotten um, or, or, or maybe something that, you know, was asked of you or, or told you like, you know, for example, I'll give you my, when I started in this industry, um, the, the captain who was retiring, who was giving essentially turning over the boats to me um, with the two, the two boats that I started with in the industry. Um, he said, listen, you know, this, don't think this is going to be a, you're never going to make a career of this. You know what I mean? He said, yes. you're, you're never going to make any money. You're never going to make a career of this. And, and to me as my, my, my motto or my mindset was like, I'm going to prove that guy wrong, you know? And so I was just curious as if, if you've ever gotten a, a, a potentially negative piece of advice, but taken it and, and twisted it to, uh, to something that's a, uh, you can use more positively for yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, my parents, they weren't supportive when I started this cause they didn't see any potential and, and I get it all the time. People tell me they're like, Oh, this is seasonal work. And, and do people look at it? You know, I say I'm a boat detailer and people look at that in a weird way. Like, you know, that's not really a job or, or this or that. And it's like, people just really don't understand. And I didn't really even understand when I first started, but I see the opportunity and there's so much opportunity. And, and I do, I work year round regardless. Um, we have some of the largest facilities in Ohio up here where I'm at. Um, we have a 303,000 square foot, you know, storage facility that's heated. It, it holds over like 200 boats and it's just unbelievable. So um, that I've heard, um, I've had people, yeah, I heard uh, someone, you know, tell me just how to detail like, oh, you know, don't, don't try to get this or don't try to get that. It's too much of a hassle. And it's like, and I think of these people, like, what are they thinking? Like, it's just people who are trying to get out of work. Um, uh, you know, and I, I talk to boat dealers and stuff like this and, you know, they're like, oh, you know, we can't figure out how to wax a boat and it's only going to last for a month anyways. And, and then somebody told me, they're like, somebody told me, and I thought this was horrible, but they're like, as long as the boat looks good when you get paid, that's all that matters. And I just, that really hurt me. Cause it's like, you know it could look good for a week and then so I just focus yeah. on, on on the biggest thing that I focus on is like I'm trying to give my customers you know six months of protection that that's kind of my five to six months is like my minimum standard um and I and a lot of people just they're not they're not searching to grow like they've done the same things for 20 years they've been using you know these just spray on wax products and stuff like that so it is. It's like, I, I'm just trying to grow and, and I never, I never stay on one product. Um, um, you'll see, I have another video coming out here soon um, that I already made, but it, I'm moving on from another product. So it's just, I, I continue to grow and learn. And as I see this stuff in the industry, um, I'm always searching for the next best thing. Um, and even if I have, and then I feel like, you know, even if I have to, at some point later in my future, create a product, like I would be willing to do that. Because it is, I, I do get disappointed with some of the products out there. Um, and I feel like there is an opportunity for better products. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my take totally on that. Agree. I don't know if that helped you at all. No, it's, that's, it's good. And it's, I, I like that exactly is take, take the, you know, take the grain of salt in it again, whatever it might be. Someone gives you, you know, some kind of a, you know, tries to dog your dreams or whatever it is and, you know, go with where your mind's at, you know, your heart's at and, and get at it and, 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 you know, use it as fuel instead of as a, as a, as a, uh, a hurdle for yourself. So. Yeah. You got to look at, you don't want to take the negative too hard, but you don't want to take the positive. Cause I've got some really positive things. People told me <laughs> uh, my first year, That's I was true working, too. the first year I was working like only a couple months in, um, I was working super hard, like on the weekend and the guy, you know, he, he noticed and, and he's like, he's like, dang, he's like, you're going to be a millionaire one day. He's like, I can just tell with your work ethic. So like, that was really motivating. And it's like, that is one of my goals, but it's like, you want to make sure you're not get too high, but also don't get too low. Don't so. yeah, Don't get <laughs> your head too big on those. Yeah. So but yeah, good, good but, for you, man. I like your, I like the mindset. And again, that's, I'm glad you reached out and, and we, again, we've been talking and, and chit-chatting. I know. Back home, so, <laughs> I'm um, so glad we trying to read one of these days when I get out to Cleveland uh, or that area, uh, or maybe I guess down in, uh, down in Florida. Yeah, down enough, Florida, but, maybe. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get together for, uh, um, for some chit chat and, uh, and catch up. Cause this is, uh, I appreciate you and what you're doing. And I, you know, thank you for inviting me to the channel and, um, you know, appreciate your, your audience and, and, and anything that uh, I can do to help you or, or any of your people, you know, you can share my email. It's Dan at elevate yacht.com and, um, feel free to reach out and anyone that, you know, I, I feel like helping people out, you know, I, I'll take an extra phone call, take an extra email, uh, whatever it might be. Cause if it can help someone else, whether it's to get into this industry or, or whatever it is, it's, you know, that it's just, it's friends helping friends, man. It's all about it. So it is, it is, it's about creating a network. And when I first started, I wasn't, I didn't really see that. Um, you know, it is, it's about creating a good network, uh, 
you know, if you got questions or, or things like that, you can always ask somebody. And that, that's where I'm at now. I'm trying to expand my network with other individuals in the industry. So, and you've been amazing. And, and just like I said, um, I know I've said a lot, but it's like you, you've been amazing at what you're doing. And I'm so glad we were able to do this today. But one last thing, if people want to find you, you know, hope maybe someone was watching the channel or something. If somebody wants to find you or reach out to you, how can they reach out to you? So, yeah. So the email is just dan at elevateyacht.com, uh, E-L-E-V-A-T-E, yacht, Y-A-C-H-T.com. Uh, my website is elevateyacht.com. I keep it all pretty simple. Uh, YouTube, okay. Instagram, Facebook is just at Elevate Yacht. So it's it's very, pretty, pretty basic and pretty simple. Um, and, um, you know, again, email if, if there's something more detailed that we, we, we can't discuss on, uh, you know, the basic uh, YouTube or Instagram uh, messages or whatever like that, you feel free to do that and maybe schedule a call or whatever it is. But, um, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. And um, I'm happy to, to chit chat anyway. And, and especially for you too, man, uh, Simon, when we get, uh, when you get settled in and, and, and I'm happy to introduce you to more people that I know down in the, down in the new neck of woods for you and uh, anything I can do to help you kind of get your foot more and more in the door and continue to grow your business. Happy to do it. All right. Thanks, Dan. And uh, this will be a wrap Thank for you. the podcast. Guys, remember to follow us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or you can also watch the YouTube version on YouTube, all at Top Doc Pro. So thanks, Dan. I uh, appreciate your time. Thank today. you, Simon. Have a good one. All right, man. Cheers. Take care, guys.